Hi there, welcome to Tramper, introducing to you the new uh, awesome longboard uh, 1250s with extra wide trucks uh, mounted at 50 degrees. When you received your longboard and you open your box, you will receive the board part pre built for you, the trucks built both front and the back, and the only thing you'll be doing is assembling the trucks with the bulk kit provided with an 8mm socket. After mounting the truck, the next thing to do is get yourself a 2.5mm Allen key and take out all the bolts in the tray. After releasing all the bolts around the tray, you now be able to lift it up, exposing the internal parts of the board. The batteries we're using today have been specifically designed for this long board. Now these batteries, there will be a link on our website to the company that's providing them. We also do the wiring loom specifically for these batteries. What we'll do, leave the batteries aside for a moment. Before we continue, what we'll do, we'll connect the motor to the VESC and the hall sensor from the motor to the VESC. So firstly, we'll get the hall sensor cable and we'll push it through the small grommeted hole on the CNC panel and bring it up to the VESC like so and plug it into Sense on the VESC. You'll see it says Sense there so you can't get mixed up. Plug it in. Now you can push your grommet up to the CNC panel. If you can't get it in by finger use a sharp screw, well not too sharp screwdriver just to help you guide that into position. Once that's into position next what I would do is using the braid that we've provided for you We'll now push these onto the supply cables to the motors. So get all three in there and feed your braid down. We'll, we will provide you some zip ties with this as well so you can zip this into place. It can be a bit awkward so do push from the top. Don't try and pull it because it will not go. So push from the top and push down onto it until you get it into the position that you'd like it to be at. Okay. Once this is in position I would zip tie the back and the front okay so it keeps it into position now also we'll provide you some pads and here at the back of the board I would mount your sticky pads so when you route your cables they're not direct you can flow them then from pad to pad creating a nice even bends not to put tension onto your cables all right so after we now connect the cables to your motor doesn't matter which colour you go to at this time. Okay, so we just plug them in. Once this is done, don't bother zip tying it just yet, but once it's done, this is now ready to install the batteries. Each battery, what I would do is on your batteries is install the uh, provided Velcro that we'll leave in the box for you. Install that on your batteries. So you can put that into position onto your board, end to end, just lay them into position, not too close, make sure all your cables are running smoothly, watch out for the VESC supply cable there, right, once they're in, as you can tell, we are now a solid piece of equipment. Next thing to do is to get your tray. And as you'll see, as you flip it over, it's already got a pre-installed battery loom that we'll make for you. Okay. Now this end here with the XT90 on, the female XT90, you can plug that directly now into the VESC. Again, the VESC supplier's got Velcro on to hold that into position. So push that into position now into your VESC and mount that onto the Velcro provided. Next thing to do is to now connect your batteries. Again, very simple. Negative to negative, black to black. Okay. Positive to positive, red to red. After installing the batteries, the next thing to do is to program up the VESC. Now you'll have the loop key which is the power on off key in a bag provided. Also you'll find in there as well a little bit of shrink wrap 
to put around your motors, your motor cables, right at the very end of the installation. So next of all, take the loop key out of the bag. And at the side of your lid, you'll notice that the loop key will only fit into one position. You can't get it mixed up. So put it into the power on and off switch, like so. And as you flip your board back open, you'll notice now you have a blue LED light on the VESC itself. Now you're ready to connect it to the VESC tool on your PC. Okay, so the next task is to go to your PC and open up your VESC tool, which you should have downloaded from VESC vescprojects.com when the tool is open okay check see if your power is on at your vesc with a blue light and connect your small usb from your pc into the usb slot provided on the vesc if i can get it in here that is myself once it's in go back to the pc and hit the connect button on the bottom of the screen. Now you'll see that this connected VESC has old firmware. Press OK and on the left hand side here you'll see firmware. Press the firmware, highlight 6 at the top, 6-0 and to the right here upload the new firmware. Yes. Once the firmware is uploaded Wait 10 seconds and then power down the board. This will save the new firmware. Give it 10 seconds. It should be about it. Okay, so plug your USB, unplug your USB, also unplug your power loop key the board. Okay, whilst you're doing this, you can go back then to the welcome and wizard setup at the top left there and we can reconnect again. First put your loop key back in, light comes on and then connect your USB again to your vest. Once this is in place, okay, go to connect again on your screen or to connect on. Next we're going to go to the motor setup wizard. Click that Motor setup wizard will guide you through the motor setup of your vest step by step. Go next. Okay, would you like to default configure your vest settings? Yes. Right, motor type is FOC for the motors that we're providing. On the motor setup wizard, we're going to set the current and limits to the motor and the batteries. On this particular board, we are using a 118 KV motor. Okay, so we'll just do the settings for that. There will be more settings on the website for the other motors that we're providing. Okay, so on the uh, vest tool, what we'll do, we'll first set up the motor current max. So on this particular uh, 118 kV motor, we're gonna turn the maximum current down to 45 amps. So highlight that, change that to 45. And now the motor generation for the break-in, we're gonna turn that to uh, minus 23, around about half the motor current, all right? So we'll take that to minus 23. And battery current max, what we're gonna do there is we will match the motor current max. So there will be the, there will be the same. So that one will be the same as this one here. Okay, again, 45. And again, the regeneration so the battery current regen, we shall match the one above as the motor current break to 23 as well. Okay, so they're basically mirroring each other. Okay, once you've done that, go next. And it says, would you like to configure the soft cutoff battery? This will prevent the battery from discharge over discharging. Just press yes on that. Now it will automatically read your cells what you've got. Okay, and you can apply these cells, and then you'll notice here the cut off and the cut end start will automatically be displayed at the top. Go next on there, 
Right, now we're uh, choosing our motor types. Okay, so how motors, I've got sensors. So we'll drop the drop down and we'll choose hall sensors. And we'll go next on that. Okay, now this is to run up the motor. Okay, so first of all, we hit the RL button and this will detect the sensors. So this is going to measure the sensors left and right. So again, we play the motor, buzzing but not spinning. On the tall green means it's okay. So next we move along to the symbol that looks like a bit of a teepee. We shall press that. Now this time, be careful because the motor will spin. So be sure it's off the floor. You ain't got your body near it or nothing's trapping it. Press OK and we should see. Motor spinning exactly as it should, and on the vest tool again, we should now be all green. Now, this is all green. We apply this now. Make sure you apply this, okay? And then all the settings would be applied into the vest. Go next. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to play our settings that we've just got. So the motor will tick forward and backwards across the halls. You should see it working slowly. Okay, now at the bottom here you'll see all the uh, parameters of the table coming up at the bottom, which means it's good. We can apply these now. So we'll apply these, next, and finish. Right, now that is the VESC system set up for the motors, done. The next thing we're going to do now is set up your remote control. In the box you'll see your chosen handheld remote control. This one's the main tech which is a thumb controlled forward brake or you can choose the Quantum which is a pistol grip one again a bit more bulkier but some people like the grip in the hand rather than the thumb control it's your choice whichever one you choose on the website you'll get in the box okay open the box power up your controller holding the button down once the LED lights come on you'll notice it will become a steady green light which means it's automatically connected to the vest because it's already powered up Okay, so next what we'll do, go to Input Setup Wizard. Uh, welcome to the wizard. This will choose right time of controller for your VESC. Next, we'd like to default configuration. Yes, we would. Now, as you can see on here, it says multiple VESCs. We're choosing just the one VESC because obviously it's a one single VESC setup. Highlight that. Press Next. Now, this is the controllers. As you can see, there's multiple controllers on here, as are a PPM input. As you see on the VESC, we were connected, our remote is connected to the PPM, PPM input on the VESC. Highlight this, go next. Okay, now what you will see is halfway down here, you'll see a drop down. Highlight the drop down, and we are, we, you, we are using current reverse with brake. Highlight that. Now, before you press anything else, push your controller forward, and you will see the green light move forward, pull your controller back and you will see the red light move back. After you've done this a couple of times, go to the apply button, apply this, go next, right to the VESC, next and finish. At this point, the board should power up. Brake, accelerate, brake. You can crawl as well, really slow. You don't have to power it or anything, so there is quite a good control speed of it. Okay, once this is done, turn off your controller, pull out the USB cable to the VESC. Okay, your setup is now done. What I would do next is pull the loop key and unpower the board for safety. Okay. Now, the next thing to do is literally, you can pack up your batteries a little bit. There will be some foam pads provided in the box where you can lay them on top of your batteries just to give you a little bit of extra height. So when you drop your lid on, it will slightly press your batteries down just to eliminate the shake that you will get as you're riding, okay? So make sure your cables are all in line. If you want to, you could use a bit of sticky 
depends on how you want to lay it but it should virtually lay directly into position everything's in position velcro bolted down grip tape down and next we'll flip our lid over like so okay pushing your cables into position once it's in position again what we do we get our uh, allen key which is the 2.5 mil allen key and we refit the bolts back down to the deck okay so lids bolted back down now what you're ready to do now is just to finish off the process so obviously we've already braided the cables here as you can see now what we're going to do we're going to now zip tie the end of the braiding place down here pull that tight to hold your braiding to position and then what you can do next is follow your pads you can put your pads in your own place anyway just go with the flow make it flow you don't want it tight right once you've done that the next thing that I would do personally is uh, you can unplug these one at a time again your supply cables to your motors okay and then slip on a bit of the shrink that's been provided for you now this is basically to hold it give it a bit more tighter placement when they're together so when they're together like that slip that back across the actual cable that you're shrinking heat that up with a heat gun or a uh, a hot hairdryer may do it okay do one at a time because you don't now want to mix up these colors once we've ran the vest tool once you've shrank them all on all you have to do then is finish off your braiding push your braiding over your bullet connectors if you want to go that far i mean it's up to you you don't have to go all the way if you don't want to but again me as a final finish i think i'd feed my braiding up and, and that literally take it as far as I could uh, up the supply cables okay so once you've got that all the way up to the top can be a bit fiddly to start with but once you've got it up there again you can do your finish off by putting another zip tie that will be provided in the box at the end of your braid and once you've done that there is a zip tie that comes out of the carbon panel which will hold your braid in place I don't know if you can see down here there is a zip tie down here you can pull that tight and that should hold your braidment in place there okay once that in place cut off your zip ties spin your board band throw your loop key in and you're ready to roll no problem thanks